Welcome to puzzle solving number 6. In today's video I'm going to solve a puzzle I haven't seen before, and the video is going to be divided in 3 different stages. Number 1, evaluating the position. Number 2, calculating. And number 3, making a summary of the whole puzzle, just so we can digest and highlight the important moments of, of, of the learning experience. Let's go. As mentioned, I haven't seen this before other than when I was trying to get this all, all this setup with OBS. Um, it seems like we're playing with white pieces. Funnily enough, normally we get end games when 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 I'm doing this series of videos, but we're getting a middle game, or the opening actually. Sorry, because we haven't castled yet. So this is white to play and win, or white to play and find the best move. The first thing I'm going to do is evaluate. So we evaluate the position. We have how many pawns? It seems like white is down a pawn and black still has all eight pawns. Um, what else? It seems like we have an knight on b5, so we're, we're attacking this. So piece activity wise, I think that white might be doing better just because of this motive on c7. Black does have a pin on the on the f3 knight, but I wouldn't be. It's a relative pin, so it's not an absolute pin, uh, which means that I could still move the knight if I wanted to. Uh, different to what well, let's say a king on d1. And uh, what else can we... Well, pawn structure, I think it's not worth uh, evaluating too much because given that we're having a very sharp position where black is up a pawn and white is trying to to, to compensate for that, then I think pawn structure-wise, that wouldn't be so, so important. On top of that, black is up a pawn, so pawn structure, if anyone's better at pawn structure, it's probably black because black is up a pawn. So, highest priority, probably king safety as well because of this knight takes c7. Piece activity, because of these two pieces, minor pieces attacking on c7. And other than that, I think we can start calculating. Okay, candidate moves. I'm going to make a list of moves that attract my eye. The first one being knight takes c7, because it's a check. The other one being bishop takes c7, attacks the queen, and then allows knight d6 check afterwards. Uh, so, for example, queen d7, knight d6 would be, would be very bad for black. Black has to give up the, the queen. And other than that... I'm going to make an effort to try to make my candidate move list at least three moves. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say knight. Difficult to choose. Probably knight b takes d4, just taking the pawn back, and I'm quite sure that's not losing. Now, when you're looking at moves, if, if you're a beginner or if you don't, you haven't been around chess too much or too long. Short, sorry. You're probably going to think, David, how do you manage to calculate? How do you start? How do you know knight takes e7 and bishop takes e7 are, 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 are important? Why is bishop g3 or, or h4 not important? Well, when we can, we're doing candidate moves exercises, we're trying to look at captures, threats, checks, and in general, moves that, that are dangerous for black. So, for example, knight takes e7 is dangerous for black, it's check. Bishop takes e7 is dangerous for black because it attacks the queen. So h4 is not doing much. Bishop g3 is not doing much. That's why it wouldn't even consider those. Uh, that being said, I think we can start with knight takes e7, which is the most forcing one out of all. Knight b takes d4, I think we can eliminate very quickly. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not doing anything, but if knight takes e7 and bishop takes e7 don't work, then knight b takes d4 will have to be played. And a normal game probably will arise from that. So knight takes e7 check. Candidate moves for black, uh, king ta queen takes e7, bishop takes e7, I think black is probably losing there, so king d7, after knight takes e7, king d7 has to be played. And then the question becomes, can I take the rook without anything happening to my own king? The answer probably is, hmm, the, the answer is probably, yeah, but I would have to be careful with something. So far I think that, like, uh, it's fine. I'm threatening to come back with, with my knight, so candidate moves for black in that position would be queen takes a8. Um, and I guess queen a5 check, to which I'm probably going to have to play king f1. Okay, I'm going to calculate that. I'm going to leave it there for now. And then I'm going to I'm gonna look at bishop takes e7 now. Why? Because, well, what happens is that after knight takes e7, king d7, I'm already spending quite a lot of time. And instead of spending my whole time in a real game uh, with this move, I would rather looking at the other variation because this may be easier to look at and, and, and I, may, I may not take that long looking at this. Um, that being said, bishop takes e7, this is good timing. 
after queen d7, as mentioned, 96 is winning the queen, and queen c8 also 96 is winning the queen. So already now, we know that bishop takes e7 is very, very attractive, and I really want to play this move. I'm going to make an effort to try to find a resource for black, but I think there isn't. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to play bishop c7, and this is very important because after bishop c7, it's pretty, it's pretty clear that black only has two candidate moves, this, this, or something else, but... If you if you if you don't play something else, then you're just gonna lose the queen either way. So queen d7, and now we play knight d6, and we take, and that's the answer to the puzzle. So this is the powerful thing about candidate moves. Many people, intermediate or advanced even chess players, would play knight takes e7, king d7, and spend hours. Well, okay, sorry, 20 minutes calculating what happens after knight takes e8. To which I'm suspecting that black some, has some sort of composition, which still doesn't look. Like there is, but we should stop after a while and say, well, okay, bishop takes e7 is still a candidate move. Let's take a look at that. Maybe it's easier to maybe it's easier to know what's going on. And that was the case. Bishop takes e7. Black has to play something like king, queen d7. If queen c8, we play knight d6 and we win either way. And after this, black has to take the knight. There's no other way to get out of check. And we're even more winning, more than taking the rook, um, because we won the queen, right? This is much better to win the queen with this because we win a queen. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions, if you think that I messed up with something right now, um, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.